My next guest is going to be taking on Alexa Kammer at UFC Nashville, August 5th. It is the bulldozer, Tanner Bozer, back here on the program. Tanner, how are you? It's going well, James. How are you? I'm doing well, man. Glad to see you get another fight here. Uh, I know you asked the UFC to finish out your contract. Uh, were you surprised that they granted that offer? Uh, I was hopeful. I was hopeful I would get um, the, to fight out my contract. Um, I'm grateful that they are allowing me to, and uh, he's in the, the same boat. So someone's going to figure it out and someone's not. Did you know much about Alexa before taking this fight? N no, I I'd seen his name for sure. And I'm sure I'd seen a couple of his fights, but of course I went back and uh, studied him and, and watched him and everything. Uh, he, he hadn't been active for a little while, so that's probably why he wasn't fresh in my memory. But to be completely honest, I, I was, I'm a lot more familiar with every heavyweight prospect and stuff because I was there for so long. I hadn't paid as close attention to um, light heavyweight as I had heavyweight. Was there anything you could take away from your last fight against Ian Kutalaba? Nope. He got me, man. He got me and it only took a couple minutes. So I, he hit me with a, a hard punch. I know how he set it up. I know what I did. I know what he did, but he just got me. There's not a lot to learn. I don't think, unfortunately. Well, to be fair, you were kind of in a weird spot and uh, you couldn't really get out of it. Ah, yeah. But, but I went to block an overhand and he threw one down the pipe. So, and he did that because I blocked an overhand too soon in the fight. I found myself in a position where I had to block one and, uh, I reacted the same way and he set that up beautifully. Let's talk about your opponent, Alexa Kammer. Now that you've had a chance to kind of research him, uh, how do you feel like you match up against him? Uh, well, I think it's going to be an exciting fight. He's a good striker, uh, really good striker. He's got really crisp hands, um, technical. He's got flashy kicks when he wants to. Uh, I think this is going to be a, it's another coin flip of a fight on paper, but I think it's going to be exciting. Just looking at this fight on paper, Cameron's only got eight fights. You've got 31. How much will experience play into this? Could be, uh, could be, I, I'd, I'd like to think I can lean on that, but he, he trains with Stipe. He trains with the UFC's heavyweight goat and he's got a good team and good coaches. So I, I can't go in there thinking he's some kid, you know, I mean, he's, six and two but he's been fighting for quite a while he just he just didn't fight like multiple times a year a lot he, he's just been training and, and fight here and there uh yeah experience is on my side for sure but how much does that count well hey we'll figure figure it out what about the fact that he hasn't fought since june of 2021 do you believe in cage rust or do you think it depends on the fighter it depends it completely depends on the fighter yeah uh I, again, I wouldn't put stock into that. I like to think my opponents are, are top notch and that they're, I don't like to, he's no good at this and I'm better at this. Let's for 2021, uh, was his last fight. Well, I know he had to get surgery on his arm, but I can only assume that for the last couple of years, he's been improving and getting better at everything. So I expect to see a better version of Alexa Kamer or Kammer, sorry, than uh, his his last fights. Anything different for training camp, or is it just business as usual? Yeah, it's, camp's going well. I I do have the usual guys. You know, I got Graham Park and Christian Larson and KB Buller. And I got a couple really tough uh, amateur uh, guys coming up that I'm, I'm grateful for. How they have a couple particular strengths, you know, that I can use for certain rounds. Uh, I got jujitsu black belts I'm working with. Uh, Mike Newton and, and of course Jeff Montemiro, um, Mitch Clark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mitch, Mitch teaches. Uh, we do. He he runs our pro team on Tuesdays. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know he was teaching MMA. I know he was dabbling a bit in pro wrestling. Oh yeah, yeah. He's doing that. He's doing that for fun. But but yeah, it's good to have him around, and he uh, he's got a lot to teach. So it's good to have Mitch around the gym for sure. He's definitely an, an intellectual guy. So to have him there and be able to. Uh, um, yeah, impart some of that knowledge that, that he's gained over the years is uh, fantastic. We got Roger Alves coaching our wrestling. He's wicked. Uh, it's been a huge help for, for the team as a whole and, and me in particular. Uh, man, I, everything, honestly, I'm feeling good. I was feeling good last fight, though. I, uh, I, I'm not going to blame anything like that. Like, I felt the best I ever felt. I just, I just, I just lost. Uh, I feel really good right now. I'm really strong and I'm, I'm in wicked shape 
and uh, I can I can fight. So it's just time to time to giddy up, you know. I didn't get a chance to ask you after the fight, but how was the weight cut getting down to two hundred five in your last fight? It was really easy. Uh, I did it. I did it well. It was very disciplined. I'm a little heavier this time, but in a good way. I wanted to maintain size. The cut was so easy last time. I could figure I could keep on a few more pounds, but I'm noticeably not that I wasn't strong last time. I still was, but I'm I'm stronger. I'm stronger now. I've, different emphasis a little bit, but the weight cut's still going to be uh, still going to be pretty easy. I think. Well, you mentioned that there was an easy weight cut. Any part of you think that, hey, maybe I should have cut down to 205 a little bit earlier? I know you hated when I used to ask you that in uh, past interviews. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't wish. I, I like the way everything went and has turned out. And uh, hell, I could still fight at heavyweight and weigh in at 220 pounds. I don't give a shit. Why, why not? Like, um, no, I, I don't. I don't wish that at all. And you're still eating a lot of like local beef and stuff. I know in Alberta, they got a lot of farms. So you're eating yeah. pretty healthy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do eat a lot of, uh, local beef. I eat a lot of deer. Uh, I still have some deer from this last season, as well as, uh, my, my friend and training partner, Matt Spizak. He's always hooking me up cause he's always hunting and cooking. So, uh, yeah, deer, beef, um, you can get some pretty good uh, meats here locally, even like you can get wild boar and, and elk if you want to pay a little more and bison and stuff like that. So yeah, I, I eat a lot of meat. I eat good. My mom's got chickens, so I always have a ton of eggs. So who will be in your corner for this fight? Uh, well, KB is always with me pretty much. So I have KB, um, me and KB can always go corner each other because neither one of us has a real job. And, uh, Roger Alves will be there as well. Like I said, he's been a, a crucial crucial part to my last couple training camps and uh mike newton who i work with uh he's a jujitsu black belt uh, and a good training partner of mine he'll be there cornering me too so that'll be my corner have you ever been to nashville before are you excited to go no and it's it's a cool location i'm i'm excited um that it's not vegas why don't you like vegas is it just the city or what what's the deal no i don't but also i hate the vegas judges notoriously so Plus, Nashville's like got like a bit of a country vibe like Alberta does, right? Yeah, yeah. No, Nashville is is a, a place that I saw the card was going to be at. I'm like, oh, that is that is cool. You know, Last one being Kansas City, that was cool too. So. And I got to ask, what's your prediction? How do you see this fight playing out? Hmm. I think I'm going to beat him by decision. Uh, before we hopped on this interview, I was looking at your Instagram. I couldn't find it. What happened? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got rid of social media for a bit. There's certainly less noise in the back of your head all the time. I'll tell you that. What about downtime? You watching any TV, anything like that? Nah, man, I haven't watched TV in a long time. What about like going for a walk or something? It's nice weather this time of year in Alberta. Well, when it's nice, I get to go out on a weekend, man. I don't have free time in the day. You know, all I do is I wake up, I eat, I, I go to training, uh, I eat, and then I usually have another training, and I'm usually teaching a class, and then I have another training. And then I come home and then I eat and then I go to bed. I don't have free time. I do on, on Saturday and Sunday. Um, on Saturday, I like to go to the farmer's market, walk around, eat something good, and uh, maybe visit with some friends or, or family if I have the time. Sunday, I spar. And after that, I got some free time. If it's nice out, maybe I'll walk around with a coffee or whatever. Uh, maybe I see some buddies. Or, but weekend nights, I also work. So... It's not like I can really, I got to be at work at 10. So, Oh, what do you do for work? Uh, I work at, I'm a bouncer. Oh, so you went back to that. Cause I know, I believe when you got into the UFC, you quit that job. Well, I, I quit during COVID when the bars were closed, but I went back, um, when I got injured and I had to pull out of the original fight with Nascimento. I, once I, uh, was able to work after that injury, I had to go back to work cause I hadn't fought in a year and a half or something like that. And I, I was broke. So I just stayed since then. All right. Well, thanks for the time, Tanner. We're looking forward to the fight. If there's anyone you want to thank coaches, sponsors, want to mention anything else, I'll give you the last word. I think I, uh, think I named all my coaches already. And, um, that's where we're at, man. I guess for sponsors, I have uh, venom who actually gives me money and not every, 
based company that puts their logo all over my shit that I don't get a single penny from, like crypto.com and all those other ones can go eat a fucking dick and the rock shoes can go f themselves too. So thank you to Venom for actually paying me to wear their shit.